Coming to you from a wrong turn off Route 66. Somewhere in the Sonoran Desert, it's James out west. Good evening, Phoenix and friends. Let me talk to you. James out west on this nice and chilly Monday, the 25th of March, 2024. As always, in studio with me, Pat the Stat Guy, Aaron on the other side of the glass. We got a little bit of NBA basketball going on in the background. Sons are in a slugfest. And as always, we go around the room and see what's going on over this weekend. But first, Pat's going to give a rundown of what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, so we got a real mixed bag for you guys tonight. Um, We're going to start with the Shohei Otani news, uh, the little gambling fraud uh, federal investigation going on right now. Um, Then we're going to get into some uh, NBA, NCAA tournament uh, upset updates, some other storylines from from the tournament. Uh, We're going to get into the NFL, talk about how they're getting closer and closer to banning tackling completely. And then we're going to go back, finish the night uh, with basketball at the buzzer again with some more uh, NBA news and stats. Fantastic. All right, so as always, that was my weekend. Obviously, uh, watching college basketball, being very excited, the opening 32, and then if the crushing defeats of all these teams losing, which we're going to get into. Mm-hmm. So, uh, But first, we're getting into baseball yep. because we do have um, obviously the biggest story that's kind of hovering over baseball we're going to get into, but you know, uh, opening day is three days away. Yep, We've got real baseball starting. Tomorrow's the last games of spring training. Um, if not today, but tomorrow, Diamondbacks play the Guardians in the afternoon here. Mm-hmm. Last game of the year before they get on to playing the uh, opening up against the uh, Colorado Rockies, I believe. Yep. So uh, baseball's getting ready to get started, but everything's kind of hampered by this news, this bombshell, if you will, um, scandal, whatever you want to call it, about Shohei Otani and his interpreter that yeah. I'm a- already Ipe. from. Ipe, Ipe, Ipe. Um, we practiced, James. We did, and I completely <laughs> blew it. I'm sorry about that, That's Patrick. Funny. <laughs> uh, right before the show, um, about how first off, it sounded like he was loaned money to pay a debt to a bookie. There's already ringing right. bells. Then it turned into no, he lied to me. He stole 4.5 million dollars worth of money to pay off gambling debts. Right. Um, whatever transpired between that, I know today there was a a press conference of, yep. of such. The only thing I want to bring up real quick because I want you to get into this because I know you did a lot on this um, is. To be in that big of debt, yeah. For for it to not be assumed that maybe Otani was gambling because just any Joe Schmo, even if you're making four hundred thousand dollars a year like Ipe was making, you're not going to be able to get into that much debt with a bookie before they right. come asking for the money. So I don't know, and all this is going to come out because it's federally investigated. They're going to, they're, you know, they're going to dive into this. So uh, real quick though, that is what we're going to get into. So Pat, please kind of fill me in on what you got on the uh, the Otani front. Yeah, so, I mean, there's obviously a lot. Like like you said, the story started out, um, you know, the, there was holes in the story right away because it changed. It went to he was helping out a buddy, and then he was kind of lied to and, you know, defrauded by by this guy. Mm-hmm. And so um, that story changed, and, and Shohei had a press conference today. Everyone was wondering, um, you know, he said he was taking no questions, so everyone wondered if he was going to answer everything, how, you know, forthcoming and upfront he was going to be about things. And, um, you know, straight up right away came out and said, um, you know, somebody stole from me. Yeah. My interpreter stole from me. So that kind of clears up that question right away. He's not saying he was involved. He wasn't helping a buddy out that he didn't know about it. And he, he was, you know, robbed, um, defrauded from his buddy of, of $4.5 million. Um, he wasn't really aware of, of this going on uh, the whole time until it sounds like maybe, uh, you know, a few days ago even when Ipe addressed the team uh, in English. Um, Shohei could kind of tell something was off. And then obviously, and then Ipe pulled him inside and kind of just admitted like exactly what was happening. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, so it was all a big shock to Shohei um, as far as, you know, we all know and as far as what he's telling us. So I do think, you know, baseball's reaction, you know, did he have any involvement? Was he betting on baseball? Was he betting on sports? Um, I'm not saying that's alleviated, but he's come out and said straightforward, I did not bet on baseball. I did not bet on any sports. Um and so I think, like, the commissioner and some of these people are like, you know, phew, like, that's exactly what we were hoping to hear. Hopefully we can move forward, and the investigation kind of, you know, confirms all of this. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think the fans kind of go, okay, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Well, it'll all is, come is out Ipe the, the fall man? Like, what's really going on here? But Well, it sounds like this Ipe character, there's a little bit to him in regards to, it seems like he's fabricated his resume a little bit. Mm-hmm. He said that he graduated from University of California, Riverside. School yep. says they don't have any records of a student by his name going yeah. there. Then the question is, did he go there by another name, which opens up another yeah, can. True. So let's not even get into that. But then um, it doesn't he, help his image of being, you know, because Shohei came out and said, 
that Ipe lied to him. So it doesn't mm-hmm. help his image of being a liar, that's for sure. And on top of that, when he said he was an interpreter for another player that was with the Yankees, the Yankees and the Red Sox, the Red Sox came out and said he was never with oh, us really? when that happened. That. So that wow. was today. So the Yankees haven't gotten back. This was as of the afternoon as far as getting back and having an answer on it, whether or not he was interpreting for a player they had at one point. But it doesn't seem like that's the case. So there's a lot of holes for this guy Ipe in his situation. And it could be that, unfortunately, Shohei, who has been here for a few years, but still acclimating to being to living in the United States, still you know doesn't speak the language, or if he does, it's very minimal. Mm-hmm. He was taken advantage of potentially. Now, because it's a federal investigation, the MLB is not going to know anything until it's done. You know what I mean? So we're not going to find out anything until it's done. Although, with the way that the Internet is today, bro, mm-hmm. okay, we have Internet sleuths, right? Okay. Yeah. So with internet sluice, I think whatever happens, whatever happens, bro. Yeah. Oh wow. You know what I'm saying, dude, the internet sluice are gonna be on it, law and order style, bro. Yeah. These boys are gonna be and gals and whoever they identify as are gonna be deep into the internet finding out what happened with this because you had mentioned it. Why do people still use bookies? Right. Why do people still use bookies? You know what I mean? Part of it is if you're spending right, like a lot if, of money. If gambling's legal. Why? Why even go to a bookie? So I think two things. One. You want to hide who's gambling or the amount of money being gambled. Right. And two, you live in a state that doesn't have gambling available online, but that's more for the recreational. Like even the the best of the best that are gambling aficionados that bet big money online try to take a cash winning that's smaller than what's going to get them flagged with the IRS. Sorry, that's just how it works. It just That's known stuff. That's why people go to Vegas. That's the other reason. It's like if he was going to be gambling like that, which he met this guy, he met the illegal bookie at a card game. All right. right. At a, I mean, there's illegal park poker games that go on all the time. I'm sure they weren't just playing for, you know, IOUs. They were playing for real money. And the guy was like, well, that's what I do. You know, there are bookies around. They're around in every state. But because for the most casual person who's not looking to spend a lot of money to, and doing that online, FanDuel, DraftKings, all of those are great. That's right. what they're for. But if you're doing those types of things, going to Vegas even for him might have been too costly because of he would be recognized. He's very recognizable to people mm-hmm. that watch and follow baseball. So then he'd have to get a bag boy or a bag man to go in and make the bets for him. So to alleviate, to alleviate that, they're using a legal bookie. There's right. no taxes on it and things like that. The problem is if you get into debt with them, what happens? they got to come collect. Because when you go and bet in, in Vegas or anywhere else, some of them give you lines of credit, but – you know what I mean? Like you're paying for it up front. You're right. paying that debt up front. Where some days he's like, hey, I'm the interpreter for Shohei. And again, this is all speculation. But that I'm good for it. Put me down for another 25, 30K on right. X, Y, and Z. And like you said, that's all kind of like it's tax-free money winnings, right? If yeah. you do win, it sounds like he didn't win a lot of money. He lost a lot of money. There's $4.5 million worth of wire transfers here, right? Like that's uh, certainly getting noticed on uh, DraftKings, right? Absolutely. But, um, and you would get a tax form for it. <laughs> exactly. So, like, yeah, there's a lot there. And, like, you know, if Sh- like I know Shohei says he didn't gamble, and, and a lot of people, you know, I'm not trying to throw this out there that Shohei did, but, like, if you were a Shohei and you didn't want people to know you're betting exactly on how baseball, you that's how you would do it. You would go through a bookie because now you can hide, hey, I am gambling on baseball. And, and so, yeah, that's why they still exist because at first I was like, why, why does this even exist? Still, you know, but mm-hmm. of course I don't have, you know, buku money and then, and all that. But, um, so yeah, that makes a lot of sense, but, uh, yeah, man, it's interesting, man. I mean, I- Ipe is about to be locked up like Akon. That's well, for sure. <laughs> oh, locked up like P. Diddy. Um, the oh, de- <laughs> now, but the debt again, the debt, the 4.5 million, unless Ipe was telling this illegal bookie that, yo, Shohei knows he's good for it. We're good for it. We're good for it. And the guy took him at his word. Yeah. We'll find out because well, there's that, that, wire transactions. That right. That's how they're figuring it out. It's like, well, timestamp, when it got transferred, right. from what computer, from what IP address, from what part of the room at the house was, right, was right. Shohei even there. They'll figure this stuff out. Right. So, like, again, we talked unanswered questions. Or, you know, he answered a few questions, but the big unanswered question is how did Ipe get a hold of $4.5 million? It's going to be coming across the next couple of weeks. You guys are listening to KDUS 1060 Phoenix, home of the Dan Patrick Show. Rich Eisen, of course, James Al West, featuring the Pat the Sack Guy. Make sure you guys come on back. We're going to dump into NCAA March Madness. Welcome back to James Al West on KDUS 1060. Thank you, CJ. Thanks for hanging out with us in tonight. James Al West, Pat the Stack Guy, KDUS 1060 Phoenix. 
All right, so obviously March Madness is going on. We're in a dog fight with uh, West Virginia and Iowa. Caitlin Clark could be her last game in college basketball. We shall see. It would be devastating. What's happening? It would I'm be devastating. It. It's like 56, 52. They're up. Okay. Okay. Uh, with like a minute and some change. Um, they were tied at 48, 48, right? Yeah. yeah. So okay. uh, that would be horrible for uh, women's college basketball if Iowa was to get bumped out in yeah, this maybe. round going to the Sweet so. 16. So that would be something. All right, so getting to the men's tournament because obviously a lot has happened over the weekend. We, you know, It started on Thursday of last week, so it's just like it's like a national holiday. It's like the greatest yeah. days if you're into gambling, if you're not, and just like watching basketball. Oh, man, there's um, a Shohei Otani joke in there somewhere. A hundred percent. Ipe. <laughs> Dude, how many people are going to be superimposing Ipe in like the stands? And oh, my the, God, right? Goggles, all yeah. this stuff. Pete so. Rose is going to do um, it, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, so, we don't have to go there, my um, bad. No, but it's a good it's a, it's actually a good topic. Um <laughs> but college basketball looking at it, you know, um shout out Grand Canyon State University, GCU getting in their first victory ever in the tournament, which yeah, is pretty yeah. amazing, you know. There's been a lot of great stories we saw, you know, Duquesne moving on past the first mm-hmm. round and all of that stuff. Um but the ACC real quick, the ACC who's been beat up by the media. Shout out Papa Merck and Aunt Vicky, because they are ACC people, and they called me yesterday to say, now, James, make sure you mention, so I wanted to bring up, it's a great point. The ACC, look at they're still representing. North Carolina's there. you got Clemson still in, right? You've got, um, they have another one in there, too, I think. Uh, NC State, they've got, like. And Duke. It's and Duke, so they got four. Four, they have a quarter of the Sweet 16 yeah, teams. Yeah, so good for them, good for the ACC showing up. Yeah, they're up. eight and one so far in the tournament. That's incredible. Yeah. That is incredible. So good for them. Um, but so, kind of the cream did rise to the top. We got a lot of – there was a lot of um, upsets in the first round like there always are, but there was a few crazier ones than usual. Um, Kentucky, you know, things yeah. like that. Versus Oakland, you know, yep. Like things like that. Yeah. It's, it's – it, but to see that UConn's still around, Clemson's in, U of A still around, you know, North Carolina's number one still around, Alabama's – the the lowest seed I think is a six seed in the single digits. I think that's the lowest yeah. seed left. Like, so everybody, so this is going to be the best of the best moving forward. So this should play for dynamic basketball. Yeah. And UConn's not only still around, they are rolling. They are red hot, almost like the Houston Rockets, right? Like they are red hot. Like they've now won eight straight games in the tournament by double digits. I think that's the second longest streak of all time. So, yeah, you know, I'm a UConn guy. I don't know a lot about college basketball. I did not want to watch a lot this game. But uh, every bracket that I've ever won was when I bet on UConn. So I'm kind of doing that same thing. They are my my winners this year, and and for good reason, man. They are blowing teams out. But they are, and and, and you, you know, know, yeah. I was gonna say, you know, Mike Greenberg had a comment that he said UConn would make the Eastern Conference playoffs in the NBA. So <laughs> I, that's I how good that's, they are, right? I think that's a little crazy, but yeah, yeah, yeah that's how a, good they are. It's a stretch. But they're, they're playing. Good. They're that dominant, is what yeah. he's saying. You know, like you had Yale move on. Like there was teams. Yale beat Auburn. Like, there were yeah. some big upsets that happened. And to have, you know, UConn playing San Diego State. San Diego State, great story. You know, the Aztecs. Um, don't know that they're going to be able to get it done against UConn, but you just never know. Houston having to go into overtime to beat Texas A&M, then to have to, they're rolling to play Duke. Like, they're set up. They're not set up for the best success. NC State, they're the 11th seed. They are playing Marquette. Marquette, a lot of people have Marquette going to the championship game. Mm-hmm. So, if, if, it, if chalk happens... You know, we're going to see Marquette versus Duke. We're going to see UConn versus, you know, it it could be Iowa State, which is, or, or U of A. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, there's so many things that could happen in the tournament, which is so great about the tournament. But the women's tournament's been wild, too. There's been a lot of great storylines. Yeah. So, college basketball is in no, and all of that being said, again, how many stud players can you name in the male tournament yet? Like, there's been a few guys that we've seen, like the kid from, Oakland, or not right. kid, he looks like he's 37 years old. He goes, I know I'm not playing in the NBA, but I can shoot with the best of them. That kid, that man, that grown man, you know, we learned about him. We learned about some of the guys that, uh, like Eddie House's son and a couple yeah. of Jaden um, House. Yeah, so, and, I mean, it's it's Jack Golke is his name, go. right? And, yeah, like, again, I think even after his loss, there was, like, a really long line, you know, to get your picture taken with him. He is blown up for sure. And, again, yeah, the kid went and hit 10, you know, he went 10 for 20 in his NCAA tournament. He hit 10 threes in the tournament, right? Like, and again, Oakland beat Kentucky, who, again, I did some research, and Oakland has one player in the NBA currently, right? Kentucky, 28, right? My so that's goodness. the difference in those schools. So it's is a major upset, and you're right. Like, he has become one of the stars of the tournament. And then the other kid is the, the kid from NC State, DJ Burns Jr. This kid is 6'9", 275. Like, yeah, I saw him. Like, yeah, you just, like, he's massive, right? Like, 
Um, you know, and people compare his game to the jo- uh, to the Joker, right? Like, because he's just a great passer, and he's like, you know, he's a true big man, right? Like, they they, they joke that like he you know he plays like Joker, but he's built like Big Baby Davis, right? Like, you know, he plays like, and this is a this is a way back. But, I think he uh, and when mixtapes, there was a dude. His name was Escalade. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, that's it, right? Because yeah, they that's no, how he cause they uh, yeah they. Escalade was kind of getting uh, compared to Joker, too, so that's a perfect really? comparison. That's yeah, because of the passing, yeah. That's funny, yeah, because he was an amazing passer. Yeah. For all you that don't know what that is, go to YouTube, look up Animal Mixtape, and Escalade, just type in man, Escalade, and you'll see some of the most amazing street ball passing and, and finesse game moves. for a big man. When I say a big man, I mean a Wide big body. Man. Yeah, he's as big as a refrigerator. Yeah, and he was doing spin moves on dudes. And dunking, <laughs> and dunking a ball on fools flat-footed. Just but, yeah, no, that's who this kid kind of reminds me of or you of. Like, either way, like, so there has been some some stars are born from this tournament, which we love to see. And, um, yeah, but I still, I'm still thinking UConn takes it. Yeah, I mean, I can, obviously, that's who I picked in one tournament. In one, I did two brackets. One bracket, I picked UConn. The other bracket, I picked Kentucky. Okay. I don't ever, you know, again, I don't do this. I don't follow a lot of college basketball until this time, like most people. Um, I had actually had Dayton going pretty far. I had U of A losing in the second round because I I thought that's what they're that's what they do. Right. That's what they do. And Dayton is a team that I felt like you know they could get a run, maybe make it to an elite eight. So I had them moving on. So that really crippled uh, my my bracket. So and I didn't fill out another one. So it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It was it was, it was for fun. It was also for a bottle of bourbon. So we'll find out if I end up. You can still win yeah. that if, even if you don't. Honestly, want to my nephew is what a month years old right now. Like a month old, month years yeah. old. Sorry, <laughs> a month old. Right. Like he could pick my bracket better than I could at this yeah. point. Like at this point, that's I'm. I don't think I'm doing a bracket ever again, to be honest. But um, yeah, no, it's been fun to again see the storylines, see the upsets. There was a lot of upsets uh, in the first round. So yeah, it's been really fun and exciting and. You know, every year it works out. So those games will be st- popping back up towards the end of the week. Uh, obviously, women's is today and tomorrow, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know what's going on in the Iowa game by chance for the female for the for the females for the women's game? Because this is this could be Caitlin Clark's last game. We shoot, they were in a dog fight. So do you have a score on that by chance? I'm looking uh, at sixty two fifty four seven seconds left. Okay, Iowa's so gonna like pull gonna it out. Yep. They're gonna move on. Well, good for them. That's what everyone wants Again, to see. Yeah, because I think that puts them in a matchup to play LSU. Yeah, what is that? The, is that the Sweet Sixteen? Yeah, uh, yeah. So again, and then. Not to, sorry, no, this is good. not uh, what you were talking about. But again, I think you, the men's Sweet 16, I think it's in what, Dallas? Mm-hmm. Goes to Dallas and then it comes to Phoenix. And the Final the Four final is here. Four, so. I know. Shout out Papa Murk. He's like, why is the Final Four in Phoenix? Isn't it so congested? I go, oh, don't worry about it. They play it so far out of town that there's no traffic. Don't worry about yeah, it. They play yeah. over in the, in, the, in the Sun State. Why not come to Phoenix? Yeah, all right? yeah but, exactly. Uh, be here in March, and you'll know why it's here. Yeah, exactly. For sure. So, do you have anything else with the uh, no, tournament? I, I think I'm good on that. We, I mean, we got enough other stuff, too. Absolutely. Oh, because we're talking college real quick. Shout out to the Ohio State women's hockey team. They won the uh, national championship for our college uh, hockey. Nice. So, yeah, that's right. Well, they beat a Minnesota. Minnesota. Well, they, oh, they did beat a Minnesota <laughs> now, I don't school. know if they beat Minnesota or they not, but I'm sure they did. beat a Minnesota school. Uh, they yeah. most likely did. All right, so real quick, because obviously we're going to be running into the break, so this is going to take into that. But NFL did a couple of things. They uh, banned the hip drop tackle, which is essentially, ladies and gentlemen, if you watch football, when a guy goes to make a tackle and he just drops, he wraps him around his waist and drops all of his weight like a dead body, like a sack of potatoes trying to drag him to the ground. They are now making that a penalty, a 15-yard penalty. I don't know how they're going to enforce that. I don't like this rule. And it's also finable after the game. And I don't know how. When So you have a guy like Derrick Henry or a guy like Nick Chubb, and you are you trying to wrap him up because that's what you're taught. What are you supposed to do? Now you're supposed to keep your feet moving and churning and keep like hold him still and just like that's going to lead to more people being stood up more i think and taking harder collisions of other guys coming in to hit them yeah so honestly i, I had I to yeah go ahead I, sorry i had to look up you know the the technique you're right and it's actually um you know it's called the hip drop play mm-hmm. they actually banned specifically the swivel hip drop so that's what they're talking about it's there's a hip drop tackle and then there's the swivel and apparently uh According to NFL uh, competition committee, uh, I guess, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, member Rick uh, Rich McKay claims that it's only the swivel technique, which has been used 230 instances last year, injuring 15 players or causing 15 players to miss time. Okay, so it's a it's a play that isn't used very often and causes a lot of injuries. I'm, I'm now maybe so again. That's the I that was the one thing I found where I was like, you know. 
maybe people are getting this wrong and it's really specific to the swivel thing, but you're right, man. The players' reactions to this have been crazy. Everyone's saying they're banning tackle football and even, even banning the swivel move. I don't know how you can necessarily control that, but I did want to share that piece of information that um, it's, it's got to throw the word swivel in there. That's interesting. I'll, I'll make sure I do that from now on. Um, I'm not, obviously, like I said, a big fan of this. Um, I'm curious to see, and I'm sure the information out there is that it's 15 players. I want to know what 15 players were. How many of them were quarterbacks? Yeah. How many of them were Pat Mahomes? Yeah. I don't How know. many of them were elite guys? Because this is only coming up for that reason. You know what I'm saying? So I'll be, the the competition committee is made up of um, players or ex-players, coaches, active coaches, ex-GMs. It's, a, it's like 16 people. Um they usually are looking out for the, what's best interest of the game. This might have been the lesser of two evils. I don't know. We'll find out more about it. Um, on the other side of the break, we're going to dive into more football, and then we're going to obviously, like we said, get into basketball. You guys are listening to KDUS 1060, Phoenix, home of the NAU football. Go Lumberjacks. That's right. Aaron's favorite, ASU baseball. And, of course, your Las Vegas Raiders. Shout out, Bowers. Come on back. Back to James Out West on KDUS 1060. Thank you, CJ. Thanks for everybody hanging out with us. James Out West, KDUS 1060, Phoenix. All right, so we were talking about the, uh, we're going to wrap a bow up on this, uh, the swivel hip drop tackle. Because yep. I got to make sure I put swivel in there. Yep. Um, but obviously, players are not very happy about this. Yeah. Um, I'm sure some players are that, that this happens to. So offensive guys are probably happy about this. The yeah, defensive right. guys are probably very upset about this. You you'd mentioned there's You're a right. couple of guys that have vocalized. Yeah, and they are defensive players. Yeah, so, like figure. you said, uh, you know, JJ Watt uh, tweet, tweeted, "Let's you know, let's basically just fast forward to the belts with the flags, right? Like, might as well just turn the NFL into flag football already." Ryan Clark kind of said the same thing. Um, he said, you know, now let's just make it so you can't bring offensive players to the ground anymore, right? Like, why not just make it the Pro Bowl all the time? Right. right. And so, like, obviously, that was the initial reaction to that. Again, I don't know if there is. Again, I, I saw that swivel news and the, and the kind of the clarification between um, a hip drop tackle and a swivel hip do- drop tackle. And that's more what this is apparently focused on. But um, even that, like, that's got to be hard to control your body and to have this list of moves you can't do when you're, you know, trying to travel, uh, tack- tackle Travis Kelsey or someone like that. Mm-hmm. Like, you're like, all right, Travis is running at me. I got to tackle this guy, bring him to the ground. But I can't do this move. I can't do that move. I can't right. use my body weight in this way. I like, can't launch. Yeah, ridiculous. I can't launch myself. I can't use my helmet as a, as a weapon, which all, so what you, all you good able, things. But so you, you can maybe pull their flag in the yeah, future. So absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, I know they're working on some because uh, the owners meetings were today in Orlando and they're working on like the new kickoff rule. That's an interesting one. That actually is so in depth. We're gonna save that for another week because okay. it, there's a lot to unpack with it because yeah. it's very confusing, in my opinion. Like the ball's live now. If it goes into the end zone, it's no longer an automatic kick touchback. Mm. It's the way that it's written. Basically, and we're gonna get into it maybe I think next week. All right. So it's just it gets really wild. It's it puts some games and shit back into the All kicking right, yeah, game. Yeah. All right. So, but what I wanted to talk about, and again. <laughs> For somebody that does not like the team I'm talking about, the player I'm talking about, because but it makes it's a it's a relevant this, conversation oh that God, came to me. Yes, it is fifth week in a row. Fifth week in a row of Mr. Unlimited Russell Wilson talk. Oh wow! I, right. And I'm Aaron's probably going to get sick of it too because he he's not too thrilled about this being his quarterback. But you know, this morning I was listening to NFL Network Radio and they were talking about Russell Wilson. And it was they were so matter of fact that he's a Hall of Famer. Okay. And so I was like, well, yeah, that, is he? I'm sure that so made I, you mad. Well, yeah. no, I was just like, well, at first off, I was, I'm actually surprised at the numbers that he has compared to what I thought he had. So well, mm-hmm. we'll start there. His numbers are better than I thought they were, but still, the reason I bring it up, he's got 43,000 yards passing. That's a lot. 334 uh, passing touchdowns, nine-time Pro Bowler, which is a celebrity or, uh, you know, popularity contest. One Super Bowl win with two appearances. Okay, we're going to call it. Eli Manning's got 57,000 yards passing, 366 touchdowns, two-time Super Bowl champ, two-time Super Bowl MVP, and some people think he's borderline. So that's 14,000 more passing yards. Matt Ryan's got 62,000 yards, 381 touchdowns, a regular season MVP, and a Super Bowl appearance. Is he a pro? Is he a Super, uh, Hall right, of Famer? He's borderline to no. people, too. Yep. Phil Rivers, 63,000 yards, 421 touchdowns, 2013 Comeback Player of the Year, eight time Pro Bowler, eight. 25 per, kids. Yeah. And didn't play, and he sat his first two years behind yeah, yeah. Drew Brees. Is yeah. he a Hall of Famer? I don't know. Cam Newton. Now, this one, you, you, no, but. 32,000 yards passing, 194 touchdowns, 75 touch rushing touchdowns, an MVP, and a Super Bowl appearance. Okay. 
Yeah. So Russell kind of falls into that group. He does fit in that group, yeah. Okay, and all those guys are, and in my opinion, if you're borderline, you're not in. Hmm. Because let me put somebody that's played in that same era, Aaron Rodgers, who sat the first three years, right? He's got 59,000 yards passing, 475 touchdowns, four MVPs, a Super Bowl win, a 10-time Pro Bowler, and he didn't play the first three seasons or last season. Like, right. there's so many levels. Like, that is the difference. Right. Russell Wilson, people used to compare him to those guys. Right. To, well, I think maybe at some point he was on He pace, had some yards. Right? Listen, he's got 40 touchdown passes in a season, 4,000 yards, 4,000 yards. He had some elite years. But when you look at the totality of a, of a you know, a career, and I'm putting him up against these other people, like, Eli's got way more, right. way more to go on. Okay. There's a lot of people this? that think he's not in. If he passes that ball to Marshawn and gets a second Super Bowl... Does that change your mind? Change my mind or change, change the your the, mind? You're the hardest mind to change. So I don't know if two Super Bowls does it. Yeah, probably. I think Eli's in, but because he's got two, a handoff is keeping him out. Wow, that's crazy. Or a lack of a handoff. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. So let's say he had two Super Bowls. Eli Manning's got two Super Bowls, and they think he's borderline. So he's still, in my yeah, opinion, no, I that's get still it. A Honestly, thing. yeah. When you when you put him in that, you know, because and Eli, people are going to rip like me up Eli, because these other guys well, played Eli's four more years. The biggest name in that list, you know, Matt Ryan. Obviously, there's Super Bowl winners in there, and. Cam Newton is, you know, got a ton of accolades as well. So, like, I do feel like he fits with that group. And, yeah, and, and maybe he is in, in the hall of, of very good. So, to me, that was just – it stood out to me because we were talking about it because uh, your coach, Aaron, you, lovely Mike Tomlin, was like, you know, there's a lot of meat on that bone. Like, he's very excited to see what Russell Wilson does. So, I was like, well, let me go see how much meat we've had on the bone and, yeah. and you know, and looking Dude, at I'm it. I'm excited it's for it, It's been a too, couple though. of years. Now, they said, you know, obviously with uh, Justin Fields that, hey – you know, he knows what it's like to be a franchise quarterback. He knows what it's like to have that that pressure that he's still going to be what he can be, but right now he's not what Russell is, so that he's basically going to sit there to learn, and when the time is right, he will compete for the starting job. Because the question was like, well, what are we doing here with these two guys? Like, yeah. did Russell know that he's there? Because the, I, Justin seems pretty cool and laid back, but Russell very much, I think, is, you know, I'm the quarterback, I'm QB1, you know what I mean? It's my job, and I'm going to say all the right things, but how's that going to work in the locker room? And we're going to find out real quick because we've talked about this before. Like They're going to be able to smell the BS meter real quick. Yeah, but the number one thing Russ needs to get back to a Super Bowl winning ways and like to that level of player is he needs that chip on his shoulder back when he was a rookie drafted in the fifth round having something to prove. And so, you know, the last few years of his career have probably given him that. So that's why I am actually excited to see what he does in Pittsburgh. Maybe, you know... I th- if I feel like he's got a chip on his shoulder, maybe I'm completely wrong. I don't, you know, no one sees the work Russ puts in, uh, you know, behind the scenes. So if he's out there grinding super hard, putting in the work, um, you know, maybe he could ha- have a bounce back, you know, resurgence of a year. And it's exciting to, you know, Russ with a chip on his shoulder is exciting to me. I don't oh. know if, you know, I'm not him. I don't, I'm not in his camp to know if he, like, you know, how hard he's working. I'm sure he's working hard. I'm sure he's got that chip. Let's see what happens. Oh, he's working hard because he shows you on Instagram Live, yeah, yeah, I've seen on Facebook Live. Videos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, sh- he will he's show you. He's backpedaling on the he treadmill. He will show yeah, you. Yeah. He is the Jameis Winston of off-season workouts. Yeah, okay. Okay? <laughs> um, yeah, so but, he's working hard, bro. But yes, but he's working hard, and good for him. All right. He's got a sponsored chip on his shoulder. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah exactly. All right, so obviously the draft's coming up. Yeah. We've got a lot of talk now. It's smokescreen season. We know this. Donnie has been – Donnie Drew of SI Nation. Shout out Donnie. Miss you, Donnie. Love you, Donnie. Um Talking about, you know, there's so many things going on right now. The New York Giants owner, Mara, says he's given support to draft a high high for a quarterback. You got, um, you know, Kevin O'Connell says another first round gives Minnesota flexibility. You've got Harbaugh saying, you know, Michigan's McCarthy is is uh, is draft's top quarterback and he's the best, uh, mm-hmm. you know, best pro day he's ever seen. Yeah. You know, this is Nick, college coach. This is yeah. college coach, yes. Nick Wright says that the 49ers should do whatever it takes to trade Brock Purdy to Chicago to get Caleb Williams. Okay. I mean, this, Interesting. there's yeah. a lot of ridiculous yeah. nonsense being thrown out, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thrown against the wall right now. Obviously, it'll all shake out come that Thursday mm-hmm. when, you know, they announce that who's on the clock and, and what's being taken. Um, there is talk, though, that I think the smokescreen is that Washington is going to take J.J. McCarthy. That's a smokescreen. Oh, wow. Okay. That's the smokescreen because if any, whoever really wants him is going to have to trade up to two to get him. Right. So to Man, me, that kid has climbed me, up the draft board. You know, but it's you know been what? To crazy. me, if that is the scenario, to me that just tells me that they are not in love with any quarterback but Caleb Williams, and he's not going to be there. So they're not going to exactly. waste the number two pick on a quarterback they're unsure of. 
they are sure of Caleb Williams in their mind because Cliff Kingsbury was his quarterback's coach and confidant and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, the guru there at USC with them and says this kid's so the real deal. He throws a nice ball. I like Caleb. He does. Yeah. He throws a nice ball. Yeah. He, he could absolutely have success, and he's from yeah. the Washington area, and that could be the case. But there's a lot going on. For me, in, in, in Minnesota, you know, they said they're keeping Justin Jefferson in the loop. There's been talks about, you know, is Justin Jefferson going to get traded? You're yeah. not going to do those things if you're trying to win a, run a successful franchise. Well, look, this is on ESPN's front page right now. Wilf, the Vikings Wilf, he's the owner, mm-hmm. right? I, uh, sorry, a little, a little pop-up came up. Uh, I play off contention amid QB change, right? So they want this new quarterback to help them make the playoffs, right? They're expecting big things right away from this quarterback, right? So now you got to go. Is that uh, Drake May? Is that a J.J. McCarthy? Is that a Jaden Daniels? Who is it, right? You know, I think it's it's got to be a rookie. I don't, you know. And for New England at three, they may not be so sure that their team is ready to draft a quarterback yet. Like, do you want to waste Right. A guy young when you don't have anything really around him when maybe you should plug a lot of the holes you You're have. Talking about Washington? Well, I'm, I'm saying a three because Washington have two, right? Yeah, yeah. So Washington does whatever, then New England's the next pick. Right. They may not take a quarterback either. They may trade out simply because their team's really not, even if you're going to, if their plan is to play Jacoby Brissett all year. Even if their plan is to play Jacoby Brissett all year, chances are Jacoby doesn't make it 18 games. Right. Just the, right, yeah. There's a chance he doesn't make it 18 games. You're going to thrust in a young quarterback with nobody really around them. Like, what offensive weapons do you have? How about you go and build that? Trade that three pick to somebody else that wants to come up and get a quarterback. Right. Maybe maybe that is Honestly, the Vikings. Maybe the Vikings go up and get Jaden Daniels at three. That's what I'm saying. Would the, you the feel Vikings better? are the only one that have clearly stated we're taking a quarterback and we're very interested in a quarterback. That's why their names have you know gone from trading for the five pick for the three pick. Sounds like they could even be in play for two. Like you know, and they I think they like multiple guys. I think they like JJ. I think they like Drake May. So um, yeah, it will be interesting. You know, I don't think. You know, it's because they don't. I think it's because also they don't like Sam Darnold. I mean, I wouldn't. Like, I'm not a big Sam Darnold. I'm not looking forward to a season with Sam Darnold as our quarterback. So we got to draft somebody. I don't know about these other two teams. Like, you know, if Washington and New England can go a season, you know, not drafting a rookie quarterback and going with whoever their vet and and their fill in guy is right now. I think. Well, if I'm New England, I'm thinking that this is a multi year. You're down to the studs. This thing has been ripped down to the studs. Bill's gone. Their coaching staffs is gone. Players are gone. The Patriot way is gone. Okay, yeah. Like, it's buried. It's over. Yeah, yeah. This is a new era, and it might take some time to build it. So you need draft capital. The you need to go and re- yeah. Yes, the rebranding. Good job. Yeah. yeah. They're doing, they are doing something of that nature. And for them, moving out of three, you guys trading up, Minnesota Vikings potentially going up and getting a Jaden Daniels, in my opinion, with the way that Kevin O'Connell's offense runs. Yeah. That that. That play action, yeah. the all of those things. Hey, and guess what? And when the well NFL bans uh, tackling, you can be as skinny as Jaden Daniels and make it in the NFL. So that's a hundred percent correct. <laughs> that is a hundred percent correct. All right, you guys listening to James Out West on KDUS 1060 Phoenix. Hey, make sure you guys subscribe to us on YouTube. Just search James Out West AZ. And as always, JamesOutWest.com for more sports, entertainment, and shenanigans. Come on back. Welcome back to James Out West on KDUS 1060. Thank you, Brady, for hanging out with us into the night. James Out West, Pat the Stack Guy, Aaron on the side of the glass. We're going to jump into some NBA, and man, oh, man, Suns just lost to the Spurs 104-102. And with that being said, the Suns were, this morning, the sixth seed, are now the eighth seed. That's insane. It's because everything is so tight with this uh, playoff push we have going on. Surprise, surprise, Denver Nuggets are in the one seed. Yep, we knew you that was going to um, We had a feeling that was going to happen. Yep. As of today, it would be Mavericks, Suns in the playoff, in the um, the playing Play tournament, in, yeah. and Lakers, Warriors. Like, wow. that's how it would land yeah, up today. That's so crazy. And the winner of that, like, you could realistically you could have the Lakers playing the Nuggets in the first round. You could have the Suns playing the Nuggets in the first round. You could have the Mavs playing the Nuggets in the first round. The Warriors may not make it. Yeah. The Warriors you know are only what? a game ahead of the surging Houston Rockets, who have won eight straight in nine of their last ten. Yeah, wow. Incredible. Right. That, that and Draymond team. says I, he doesn't care about the Rockets. He doesn't care. He's yeah, not worried about the Rockets, whatever. But I will say, for Suns fans, you know, it wasn't that long ago that the D-backs showed us all you got to do is get in, right? Yeah, very true. And then true. you never know what kind of magic can happen. I know baseball and basketball are very different. But all you got to do is get in, right? So, 
um, what is it, 10 more games, nine more games, something like yep. that. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't want to be the eighth seed. And again, you know, if they if it does happen, I was actually in a, in, at a post-game presser where um, Devin was talking about that, and I actually didn't think it was going to happen where they would actually be set up to be in the play-in. But he said, you know, if we're a sixth seed, whatever seed we're in, even if we're in the play-in, you know, we'll, we'll you know, take what's ever ahead of us and, and you know, just – we got to deal with it, right? But I didn't actually expect them to be in this situation. You know who else didn't expect to be in this situation? The NBA and the gambling problem. Oh, wow. Because yeah. you're, you got Shohei Otani. Obviously, that's, that's the big, you know, gambling news, you know, looming over the sports world is the Shohei Otani situation. But on the same day that all this information is coming out, you got a guy um, with the Toronto Raptors in um, John, Tate uh, John Tate Porter, who's in under investigation for ir- irregularities. Involving his prop bets, specifically, the one that kind of triggered it was March 20th against the Phoenix Suns, which was a game I was at, and yeah. no, I did not place any bets, <laughs> um, in which he only played like three minutes, was like 0 for 1, uh, ended up being out with it being ill and not playing again, and DraftKings, I believe you said, um, mm-hmm. mentioned, or reported that it was the highest paid output for any basketball uh, prop bet that day. Yep, That is weird. Yeah, There's so, enough yeah, people. That's enough people, or it's either enough people, which probably isn't the case. There's probably a few people, but it's also probably the amount of money. Yeah. Like, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. We're saying we paid out $200,000 on a prop bet for Jadante. Hold on. Wait a minute. What? Yeah. I'm curious to see oh, what I'll the tell, number is. So, yeah. Here, well, uh, yeah. That, that, but here's the numbers behind it. So, the sports book had his over under set at around seven and a half points and 5.5 rebounds. He left three minutes into the game. He did not score, attempted, and missed one shot and had two rebounds. My All goodness. the unders, right? So My goodness. either way, yeah, so he's under investigation. Who knows? It could just be a coincidence, you know. Very well could innocent be. Innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe not an NBA investigation. I don't know. But in this country, right? So Well, the fact they were so quick. Oh, and he's not playing. Like, they've already, like, he's yeah, already yeah. in. I, like, there's, and I think the, it was listed as out for, like, personal reasons or something like that. So Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He may not play basketball again. He may have to go play. He may have to go play overseas. Yeah, interesting. Because he may not. He may be blacklisted from playing. Yeah, no, he might it, be, it, get a lifetime ban. It's a developing story, though. Yes, a hundred percent. And with the guy that, imagine if it was somebody else, though. Yeah. Now the NBA is not. Who's the Shohei of basketball? Hey, oh, the, that's LeBron. James. The NBA is not um, immune to gambling issues in its history. We had, uh, you know, the ref Tim Donahue, who was uh, fixing games essentially for the mob. You had um, allegedly, we'll say allegedly, right. Michael Jordan um, with his gambling situation and allegedly why he re- stepped away from basketball, allegedly for gambling, allegedly. I'm going to say that a lot because that is the story that I think uh, most people believe is that that's why he's left to go pursue baseball was you're either going to get right. a year and a half. We're going to suspend you because we have to. We're going to step away. Right. Stepping away, we can bury this because it's pre-internet. Yeah, it's pre- sure. No one's going to find out stuff. But that I think I think there's enough now out there known that it's kind of relatively that's kind of understood. So that, you know that's the downside to it. But looking at what's coming up with, like you said, there's about ten fifteen games left. You've got guys for the first time, you know, where how many games they play kind of impacts whether or not they're right. able to get into postseason award. Uh, right, it's the their, first year that they have the sixty five game limit for. Um, postseason awards right or Mm -hmm. season awards yeah and how's that working out because we said some people have just cleared that spot that are able to and some haven't made it i think all the big names that are up for mvp have have kind of already hit that 65 mark i checked you know a day or two ago on some of these so things change quickly and i think luca was the only big name that hadn't hit 65 and he was at like 63 okay so um and they've got enough games all hit it you know and i think this became a thing i think it was it last year when um you know like Jonas, some of the guys that were in the MVP talk actually wouldn't have hit that 65 number. So, um, but yeah, this year it seems like they're going to. And I did want to give a shout out to all the guys who play play way more than 65 games. You know, those guys who play 82 games, right? And I don't have a list. I think it's a, a lot longer than last year's. Last year we had 10 guys play 82 games last year. And in fact, one of them, Mikael Bridges, played 83 games last year. That's crazy. Right, because he got traded. So he played in an extra game. Um, so, yeah, that's quite amazing. But um, another uh, stat and shout out along those lines is to Chet Holmgren. Last year, he missed 82 games. Yep, and right now, he is on pace to play all 82 games. So, that's fantastic. An amazing turnaround for the kids. So That is. That is awesome. You know, and, you know, turnaround. 
just real quick, Hawks. The uh, Atlanta Hawks stormed back from down 30 to beat the Celtics tonight. Wow. Now, let me tell you. No lead is safe. No lead is safe. But this is not, this isn't the first time that the Celtics have given up a huge lead like this and lost a game this year. For being the number one seed in the East, for having the best overall record, for only have lost 15 games this year, it's pretty impressive. But to have two where you've get, where a team has come back from down, and I think it's both from 30. Yeah. That that shouldn't happen. And they probably don't have Trey, right? Trey's hurt. So, like, That's, yeah, again, I went to the Suns-Hawks game, and Trey had a little brace on his wrist. So I'm guessing he's not better now. So, yeah, that's even more concerning. And, yeah, it's crazy when you see the Hawks – come back from 30 and beat the Celtics, it's got to be concerning. And, it, and it, looking at the playoffs, you're like, what's going to happen? Anything can happen. These teams look unstoppable at some moments, and then, you know, uh, they lose to the Hawks, or then the Suns, you know, go lose to the Spurs, right? Like, these things happen, and, you know, it's it'll be interesting. I'm looking for – just looking at how the playoff bracket sits today. Let's say the Suns are going to get in. Let's, I'm going to say Suns get in. And we'll say Lakers. We'll say the we'll say the Mavericks don't get in. I will just you know I'm gonna say Lakers play in the Nuggets the eight seed and just say the Suns are the seven. They're playing the two seed and they would play the Thunder. Yeah, Sun Thunder would be a great a great matchup. It would be fun to watch. You had mentioned that um, <laughs> that the guys that played at. You said at Kentucky? Yeah. I was going to say, you're talking about great matches. Kentucky, no, Kentucky, right? Yeah. right? Cause we were talking about this that, is incredible. The Oakland, how uh, Oakland has one guy in the NBA and uh, Kentucky has 28, right? And just how kind of crazy that disparity is. And it kind of shows how big that upset was. And all the jokes are about that. Uh, Jet was it Galky. I forget his name already, but um, about how like, you know, Hey, he even goes, he goes, these guys are going to the NBA and, I'm not. He knows I'm not going to the NBA. All the jokes are that next year he's going to be selling insurance, right? Mm-hmm. And his, by the way, the Oakland coach is hilarious. He's got an amazing personality. But yeah, either way, um, we're looking at the Kentucky players in the NBA. And if you brought them together, you know, the, they would be the best team in the Just NBA. Just a six man rotation. By far, right? And Just we're a looking at six man rotation. The, the, you know, yeah, the six man, right? You, you know, your bigs are AD and Cat, yeah. all right? Then you've got, you know, I don't know how you would kind of use these guys you've got Shea Mm -hmm. right then you've got uh D book Mm -hmm. right you've got Jamal Murray Mm -hmm. right and then as your sixth man probably bam bam Mm -hmm. out of Bayou right I'm bringing Jamal off my bench I'm putting D book as my two bam's gonna play my three yeah or I'll tell you what man cat and again, He's there's be my three. Like there's, there's, that's a dominant team that would, and we and I left De'Aaron Fox out, right? So some people might go, you know, it depends who you are, who your, what your coaching style is. Maybe you want the De'Aaron Fox over Jamal Murray, and you've got you know De'Aaron Fox, D. Book, Shea, Cat, and AD. Either way, it's crazy the kids who have come out of Kentucky. Um, so I don't know, just a little more context that for that upset. I take that team right now. That's why, like honestly, you know, teams. I was at that Suns game, and there was a fan that uh, kind of you know, told KD, KD overheard about the Kentucky upset and he was shocked. Like he was absolutely shocked because yeah, like the pedigree of that school is insane. Dude, look at this. If it was the matchup today, the four five is Clippers Pelicans, man. That's going to be, a, that's going to be a great first round matchup. The Pelicans, Zion's back to playing real basketball, like playing legit yeah. basketball. He's in great shape for him. Nuggets, uh, or there was a lot of Timberwolves, Timberwolves Kings, week, yeah. Timberwolves Kings. Like yeah. no joke, or if it's Timberwolves Suns, you know any anything in there? Did you see that it's Zion impressive. dunk? Yeah, dude, that Zion dunk. Did you see the what? There was a, a um, what a Luca Kyrie dunk, right? I think there was a, a Giannis alley oop dunk yesterday where he got an alley oop and basically like posterized two dudes, like. <laughs> and then yeah, like I, I don't know if you saw that Luca uh, uh, Kyrie thing. Uh, Mark Cuban is on the bench and has a great reaction. And then if you go look at the um, Giannis stuff, the, his whole team goes crazy on the bench. There's just been a lot of great stuff in the NBA lately. Man, it's awesome. I'm excited for it. So, all right, so next week, make sure you guys come and check us out on KDUS 1060 Phoenix. James underscore out west on IG and at Pat the Stack Guy. Make sure you guys come and follow us. You've been listening to James Out West. Make sure you guys have a wonderful night. One love. Peace.